Okay, I'm going to do my best to record this speed painting. It took me a little over an hour to do this drawing. So what I did was I put the horizon line very high up, and I drew a two-point perspective cube, um, which I've showed you how to do in the past, but because the horizon line is so high up, you're looking down on the cube, so you see the top of it. Now what I did was I grayed out that layer and uh, by changing the opacity and created a new layer on top of it. And then I just created this whole weird fantasy drawing um, with vines and trees and stuff. But I used the underlying um, two-point perspective um, cube as a guide so that I um, was able to make the drawing look somewhat 3D. So anything above the horizon line you're looking up at, anything below the horizon line you're looking down on, this is always the case. So um, with the tree, I'm looking up into the branches. And with the, with the house, I'm looking down through the, um, through the roof into the, into the inside. Um, so other than that, uh, anything that's curved or round, if it's below the horizon line, it curves down. If it's above the horizon line, it curves up. If it's right on the horizon line, it appears almost straight across. Um, and I just started playing around with the smudge tool. Uh, if you go to the bottom of all the tools on the left-hand side, um, right above the color picker, whatever that last tool is, if you click on it, you can get a list of hidden tools. And uh, I found the smudge tool under there. Sometimes you can find it underneath the blur tool, um, but it's also in the hidden tools that just don't have room on the menu for them. Um, so I'm, the thing about the smudge tool or the smear tool is that you can set it just like any other brush. So that means you can set how wide it is, how blurry the edges are, and you can even set the strength. Does it smudge everything or just a little bit? And that will be at the top, um, usually where the opacity is. In, in the case of the smudge tool, it would be the, the strength of the smudging. Um, so play around with that. Don't make, if, it, if you smudge with too small a brush, it'll look um, scribbly. So you want to kind of be bold about it. And the other thing is that when you color, you're going to have to color in the layer underneath it. You don't want to color in the same layer. Um, that's always the case, but with the smudge tool, anything you smudged um, might uh, read as if there are pixels there, and therefore you wouldn't be able to get the color in properly. So it's very important to do the coloring underneath. But as you can see, I'm really just playing with this. Um, when I'm done, I actually duplicated the layer a bunch of times, and then I used Edit Transform Scale to make a smaller versions to create a background. Um, I'm not that concerned about the rules of perspective per se. Anything on the left plane of the house uh, goes towards the left vanishing point. Anything on the right hand plane goes angles towards the right vanishing point. The straight up and down lines, uh, you know, the sides of all the windows are vertical. The sides of the trees are vertical. Um, so there's there's that. Um, but, you know, you can follow along with those general designs and general rules without being that exact about the perspective. No one's going to bring out a ruler and start measuring um, sometimes it's fun to just make a cool looking picture that doesn't exactly follow uh, the rules. And sometimes getting too uptight about following the rules of perspective will interfere with your creative experimentation. Um, so as you can see, I duplicated and um, transformed the scale of the layer and I duplicated it several times. I did edit, transform, flip horizontal. Um, I combined those that background all into one layer. And then I created a new layer underneath it. And that's where I'm adding all the color. So when I'm done adding all the color, um, which I did really with a wide brush and I just colored very sloppily because it's again in the layer underneath. So I don't have to worry about staying inside the lines. Um, but what I did was I did image 
um, image adjustments, and then I went to vibrance and I changed the saturation. I desaturated it. Um, so now I'm going into the, the layer that's in the foreground and I'm going to start playing around with duplicating that. And um, I duplicated it and then I went to the lower one and that's where I added the color. So I was adding the color right on top of the, of the drawing, but underneath a, a, an identical layer. So you can actually see uh, the color and you don't have to worry about the, you don't have to worry about messing up. You don't have to worry about, um, you know, going in between the lines or select, even using the selection tool. I'm just really literally quickly and sloppily coloring. Um, and sometimes, you know, in the interest of just having fun with your drawing and drawing quickly, I think that's the way to go. Um, so with the background, uh, the, the, the background layer, um, I'm just selecting certain areas for the gradients. And what I did was I used the lasso tool to select the areas. And then you just pick the background and foreground color and you pull out a gradient. Um, again, you can saturate, desaturate, uh, select smaller areas using the lasso, um, you can use the burn tool to add shadows. Um, and again, the burn tool, you can adjust just like any other brush. Um, but Or you could just add shadows using a darker version of the same color. There's no one right way to do it. So again, just keep playing. Um, keep pushing your ideas. Uh, think of it this way. You want to push it so far that you almost ruin it and then pull back to where it looked good. Um, that's that's my advice on on how to um, how to play around with uh, perspective drawing and creating fantasy settings. I use the puppet warp here to stretch out part of the design. You can find the puppet warp by just clicking on edit, and it's one of the choices in the drop down menu. It allows you to drop pins and handles and stretch out parts of your design. 